You're used to hearing stories from me on this channel about Irish whiskey, but today we're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to have some sips accompanied with some stories, and we're going to be tasting a very special Irish whiskey. Welcome to episode number 12 of Stories and Sips. I am delighted to be joined by Lisa McGrath, brand ambassador for Jameson, who's going to lead us on a tasting of a very special whiskey that is Jameson Black Barrel. If you didn't already know from her t-shirt, it says Jameson Black Barrel. So Lisa is going to help us understand what Jameson Black Barrel is, its history. We're going to talk a little bit about it, but most importantly, we're going to sip some of it. So I love that pop. Me too. And then I got the pop in the glass. And that gurgle as it pours out. It's gorgeous. Mm -hmm. All right. So this is a, seems to be a darker looking liquid than regular Jameson, is it? It is, yeah. So tell me, tell me where does Jameson Black Barrel come from? What's its history? So the way I normally describe Jameson Black Barrel, I describe it in two different ways. The first way is that it's Jameson's response to the bourbon drinker. And the second way is that it's almost like a homage to tradition. I'm going to explain what I mean by both of those okay. things. So basically, um, with the bourbon, just to kind of give the parameters of what a bourbon is, so everyone knows what, what we mean when we're talking about a bourbon. A bourbon is essentially, um, it's a whiskey that comes from the States. It used to be up until very recently that it could only become, you could only come from Kentucky or Tennessee legally. But with the growth of bourbons in the past decade or two, um, the commission has really laxed up on that. Okay. So you can now legally produce a bourbon from anywhere within the States. Mm. So you have different Ohioan bourbons, you have different Pennsylvanian bourbons. Um, it just has to come from the United States. And as long as it adheres to all the other characteristics that make a bourbon, you then can call it a bourbon. Okay. So some of those characteristics, I'm not going to give the full extensive list, but the most important ones are that it has to have a minimum of 51% corn in the mash bill. It also, for a straight bourbon, needs to be matured for at least two years. We already mentioned that it has to come from the United States and it can't be distilled to a higher proof of 160 and it can't be bottled at anything less than 80 proof. Okay. Anything less is going to be considered more of a bourbon liqueur than an actual whiskey. Right. And when we think about bourbon and Irish whiskey, I mean, what have they got in common? Well, we've got a lot of, we have a relationship. The Irish whiskey industry has a relationship with mm -hmm. the bourbon industry, don't they? And so since the 1950s, mm -hmm. we've been borrowing their barrels. Exactly. And just going back to the, the fact of the barrels. So another condition in order to be called a bourbon is that it has to use virgin American white oak. What that means is that there was never anything in those barrels before. There was never a liquid. So it's just fresh oak that's been cut down and charred with a flamethrower on the interior. So they flame through the interior to try and get rid of any of the impurities of the wood and then they can put liquid into it. So with a bourbon barrel, because it has to be virgin oak, it can never be used again to make a bourbon. Right. So instead of just throwing it away, what typically happens is they're repurposed. Other distilleries from different countries or, or different kind of industries are going to buy those bourbon barrels and use them in their own maturation processes. And what's the benefit of having Irish whiskey like this and most of our Irish whiskeys, in fact, age in bourbon barrels? What is the benefit of that? It definitely brings about a different kind of a characteristic to the whiskey and it brings around a different taste profile and a, just a completely different product really. Up until um, we started using bourbon barrels, we were very limited on the barrels that we could use. Mm. We typically use just European oak, so things that were coming from maybe port, export barrels, ex sherry barrels, wine casks from France and from uh, the sherry casks were coming from Spain typically. Right. Uh, so we're a little bit more limited. Now with the introduction of the American oak, it just gives a completely different kind of texture into the whiskey as well. It's a little bit oilier and it just gives a different taste profile. So with this product, what it is essentially, um, it's like I was saying, a homage to, to tradition. So up until the 1950s, like you were saying, we would only use typically European oak. With that introduction of the American oak, what used to happen was when we were still in our uh, distillery in Bow Street in Dublin, we didn't have the capacity to store those bourbon barrels when we imported them from the States in the rack houses. Okay. And the rack houses are where you store your whiskey barrels for maturation. So what used to happen before they were filled up, they'd be sitting out in the wet because it rains the whole time in Ireland. Every day. Uh, and they were sitting outside just gathering drops of rain. Yeah. So when it came to using the bourbon barrels, they were actually, actually saturated from the rain. So we kind of put our heads together and we started thinking, well, we can't really use these barrels because they're so wet. But we spent so much time, money, energy trying to get them over to Ireland. We can't just throw them out either. 
So us being the resourceful Irish that we are, That's right. we put our heads together and we decided, well, they've already been charred one time, what's mm-hmm. to stop them being charred a second time? And that's what we did. And we found that second charring brought about a bit of a caramelization mm. effect of any of the sugars that had been absorbed into the wood. So what happened was uh, the sugars caramelized and they gave way to sweeter notes. So you have more of a vanilla fudge toffee caramel. I see. So this is a sweeter whiskey than be- other. And now is this a, a traditional, like what they would call a mash bill of Jameson that gets aged in the barrels and the twice charred barrels? Or is this a different recipe of whiskey that goes into black barrel? It's a different recipe. Different recipe. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And the, so the twice charring is pretty unique to black barrel. We don't mm-hmm. hear about that very often no. with other Irish whiskeys. Uh, tell me a little bit about what this tastes like. So on the nose, it's going to be like, it's going to be very sweet. With the bourbon barrel, there's a natural component that exists called vanillin. And it's always going to give way to that vanilla component. Right. So on the nose, and if ever you're doing a tasting or if you're ever doing something, a sampling with consumers, and you hear that a whiskey has a bourbon barrel in it for consumers, you can say that it's always going to taste like vanilla. So right. you cannot be wrong if you say vanilla because it's just naturally present. Yes. So it's going to be a little bit of vanilla, a little bit of butterscotch as well, and a, a tiny little bit of a spiciness almost. Yep. A little bit of caramel too. And I love this whiskey because I think it's very accessible, regardless of if you're very big into your whiskeys or if you're just a beginner. Yes. I don't think it's very intimidating. I don't think it's very aggressive. It's very right. light. It's a great step up from mm-hmm. if you're used to drinking regular Jameson and you want to try another Irish whiskey. Mm-hmm. There's a lovely sweetness to this. And I love this as a sipping whiskey. Me too. You can put this in your cornflakes in the morning. It's oh, so it's smooth. It's dangerously and, smooth. Yeah. And so and the taste-wise then, so that, that's the nose. Mm-hmm. And then when I taste it, what should I be what should I be tasting? So what happens to me is I really I let it sit on my tongue for a couple of seconds mm. because with this it almost starts off quite light and then it develops and has a lovely long finish and nearly stays with you and warms you from the inside out. Yeah. So I can even nearly mm. feel it now, like my mouth is yeah. salivating it has with a it. Length of, it? Mm-hmm. And it's almost like causing my mouth to have a chewing effect, mm. as if I'm chewing some toffee or some caramel or something yeah. like that. And you do definitely get those sweeter notes. There's a little bit of honey as well. Yeah, you know, it's the first time I've actually tasted it. There's a spice to that that mm-hmm. I, I hadn't come across before. Mm-hmm. It does have a bit of a prickle to it. And just that lovely oaky There are almost aroma. a little bit of cloves in there as yeah. well. That's the spiciness. But so it's smooth. Incredible. And what I love about this product is that it is a step up from regular Jameson, like you were saying. But it's not so advanced that it's almost sacrilegious to put it in cocktails right it's a perfect whiskey if you are bartending to pick it up and use it in things like an old-fashioned hmm. manhattan whiskey sour it's those classic cocktails that are really making a resurgence it's not too complex that it overpowers those other right. flavors and it still shines through but it's also not a, a high enough price point that it you know you wouldn't put it in a whiskey right. it's, it's okay to still put it in those cocktails and this used to have a different name right it, there was a what was it called before Jameson Black Barrel? So before the Jameson Black Bar- Barrel, it used to be called the Jameson Small Batch uh, Select Reserve Black okay. Barrel, which for anyone, even there, is a bit of a mouthful. Right. So what we decided to do was um, we basically repackaged it. Hmm. So the Select Reserve was around for many, many years before this product, and we found that because it is Jameson's response to the bourbon drinker, um, basically, like I was saying, uh, we doubly char those bourbon barrels. And before we had to do it uh, out of necessity, mm-hmm. but since moving down to Middleton in the 1970s, we now have the capacity in our rack houses to store all of those bourbon barrels inside. Right. So it's now more of a choice than out of necessity. So um, basically, with this, uh, we repackaged it, first of all, because the name itself was a little bit of a mouthful. Right. Especially after a few of them. No one can spout out that big long name on yeah. it so we decided to condense it down and secondly we decided to change the packaging because it used to if you want to hand me the bottle james and yeah it used to come in a green coat like this so um if you're putting it on a back bar yes yeah. and you're trying to target bourbon drinkers yes. this does not look like a bourbon ah, whereas this I one see. does so the clear bottle it gave way to two things it made it look more like a bourbon on the back shelf right. on the back bar so that people who were regular bourbon drinkers were considering it as a viable mm. whiskey option or a, a viable um, you know a, a viable option for themselves if right. they are yep. bourbon drinkers because that's very like bourbon bottles that you see coming out of Kentucky exactly and- and then the second uh, thing was that we wanted to make the bottle clear because it is a little bit 
more higher end than yes. regular Jameson. And we found that consumers wanted to see the colour of the whiskey. It's got a richer colour. A really deep, really yeah. amber, yeah. golden colour. Whereas uh, the regular Jameson is a little bit lighter in colour, but you wouldn't even be able to tell that because of the green bottle. So right. just from an aesthetic point of view, that's why we changed the labelling and the, and the packaging. But it's exactly the same liquid inside the bottle. And when people ask me what's a good Irish whiskey to try to get into Irish whiskey, I always mention Black Barrel mm-hmm. because it's so easy to drink. And if you've ever drank, if you've been a bourbon drinker, You've got that sweetness, and mm-hmm. there's a smoothness that you're that maybe you're familiar with with bourbon. You've definitely got the same vanilla notes mm-hmm. that, that they'd be used to. So it's a really approachable uh, whiskey to get into Irish whiskey. So like many Irish whiskeys, this is forty percent mm-hmm. ABV. But I know there are many of those watching who like a stronger whiskey. They like a higher percentage of alcohol, maybe even a cast strength. And what many uh, viewers might not be aware of is this is available in cask strength but only from one place in the world. Yes. From the Middleton Distillery. From our own, very own, down in the south of Ireland, County Cork, Middleton Distillery. That's it. All the best things come from Cork. <laughs> and Waterford. And Waterford. And Waterford as well. <laughs> Crystal. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. That's gone now, though. That's not. No? no? we're still around. Still around? No, All right. Around. Not at the same quantity, but we're no. still there. Well, if you Schleven do want away. to cask strength, <laughs> Schleven away. <laughs> away. If you do want to cask strength, cask strength, black barrel, they do a really great thing at the distillery where they've just taken a cask from the maturation warehouse. They have put it into the gift shop. They've plugged a tap into it (laughs) and you can just put an empty bottle underneath it and you can fill up your, your bottle of black barrel. And it's, it's um, pretty much right. And it's, uh, you get to write your name on the label. You get to write the cask strength, which is typically around 60%, which is an incredibly high mm. alcohol by volume for an Irish whiskey. But for those of you who really like cask strength whiskies, I think that's a really nice gift to take away and something really unique because uh, there's nowhere else in the world you can get it. So thank you, Lisa, for educating us on Irish whiskey and also on Black Barrel specifically for letting us sip it, letting us smell it and get a little bit closer to learning the stories behind mm-hmm. Black Barrel. So... Lisa, to you and to Black Barrel, slaunch it. Oh, we're almost empty. Oh, we're empty. Okay. Yeah, we I'll drain more. the glass on you. Yeah, okay. You know what I'll do. Okay. If you liked this episode, Enter Why Wouldn't You? Isn't it about whiskey? Please subscribe so that I can foist my opinions upon you and slowly, subliminally, and successfully convert you to the joys of Irish whiskey. You can subscribe to this episode on iTunes, SoundCloud, and wherever you get your podcasts by simply searching for Stories and Sips. And of course, you can see every episode in full Technicolor by subscribing on YouTube. And if you know a friend who might like Stories and Sips, then be a good friend to them and forward them a link so that they too can be converted to the Irish neck. Slaunter.